Joining us uh, via telephone is the country director, Osai Odigo of Amnesty International. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Good morning. In a series of tweets on Tuesday, your organization faulted the decision to banish the former emir of Kanu. Can you shed some light on this? Thank you. Um, good morning. Um, we were observing and monitoring some of the treatments that had been meted to the former emir in terms of the processes which the authorities had taken shortly after they had decided to um, depose him. And what we found quite worrying was the fact that he was moved to another jurisdiction and placed there. That is moved from Kano to Nasarawa State and then asked to stay there. So it's kind of restricting his movement. And this is against the fundamental human rights provisions provided for in the Constitution, which clearly says that Every, 90, every citizen has the right to move freely throughout Nigeria and to reside in any part thereof. And no citizen of Nigeria shall be expelled or refused entry. So we found that act quite surprising. And then the fact that he was not even allowed to make communications throughout the process um, in order to limit what kind of information was going out from him. And it just shows a series of acts that was meant to just keep him incommunicable during the um, uh, removal from state to somewhere else. Okay. And it's really important in this climate to ensure that the government, who is supposed to protect and respect and fulfill human rights, is seen to be defending human rights. It doesn't matter who this person is, you have to respect his human rights. Just for clarification, in what way has the banishment and dethronement infringed on his human rights? We are not looking at the banishment or dethronement. We are looking at the processes that came out from that. Because we cannot comment on any political decisions that um, the executive um, government has made. But what was really shocking is that in whatever act or action that you are taking, you have to make sure that it's in line with the rule of law. And Nigeria, for example, has signed up to so many international treaties. And its constitution is also quite clear in terms of how people should be treated. And that is where our focus of our intervention has been. Okay, from your observation and findings, what is your assessment of the level of awareness and protection of human rights in Nigeria? Um, the issue of human rights, knowledge and skills is, is limited, particularly when we step out of the city. Um, many people cannot clearly define what their rights are, what they need to do. But if we look at it within the space of civil society organizations and the efforts that have been made to expand human rights education across the country, it's really important for the federal government and the state government to take up this responsibility to educate people about their rights and about the institutions that have been set up by government in order to enforce their rights and where they can send complaints to when these rights have been infringed. According to your findings, what are the factors responsible for human rights abuses in Nigeria? Oh, there are so many factors, um, but the main one is inequality in society. Where certain people feel that they are above the law or that they, have, they can use the machinery of government or wealth in order to do whatever they want, then you would see that infringement of rights occurs more frequently because this limits the powers of the law enforcement agencies, as well as for people who feel intimidated to have a voice or say, or to have someone, an advocate, that can present their cases before the court of law or before a complaint agency. So that really is the main issue. The other issue is you could look at corruption within the system, whereby people trying to access their rights face a lot of blockages, right from the time they complained it up to the time they get to court. And beyond that, the length of the processes to see how quickly complaints can be addressed can discourage the complainant from going further 
in enforcing its or her rights. How can the federal government curb this and further ensure human rights are respected in Nigeria? Um, one way that the government can do this is by raising public awareness. And also when there are complaints by people in positions of, against people of power, the government needs to handle these cases impartially. Because regardless of your status, there must be full investigation. And if the persons or persons or the institutions are found wanting, then the full weight of the law should be applied. What we are seeing now is more selective justice. And the more uh, people complain, the less people issues are taken seriously. It's only when the issue is thrown into the public domain and they can no longer ignore it that the federal government and the state governments actually now say, okay, fine, let's look into the matter. But it doesn't need to happen like that. It should be something that is natural. It doesn't matter who is involved. It doesn't matter whether it's in the public domain. It doesn't matter if people are watching you. You should do the right thing at all times, and everyone should be treated equally before the law. Thank you very much for your time with us on the news. Thank you very much, Chief.